uh, uh, Robin, I think it's important for us in terms of what we've been doing um, historically to, to define African history over time, all the way from our early civilizations uh, to the present. Um, we've we've done it in, in in a very shall we say historical fashion in terms of dates and um, movements of people and, and and governments. I want us to kind of go back to first principles and um, and, and 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 go back to to how our nihilist civilizations were developed. Since we know that you know the the origin of man was was certainly in Northeast Africa and also probably in Southern Africa. I'm not sure how you distinguish those two. But but certainly the sort of riff valley uh, taxing, which is fairly uh, extensive, and and that was something going back, you know, shall we say, 150 to 200,000 years. So there's a considerable development period within the continent as well as our migration outside of the continent. But um, essentially, though, the, the first human civilizations were created in Africa. You know, whether we call them. Initially, uh, Ethiopia and Nubia Kush, what, what, what name we, we call it uh, from there, but then uh, uh, as they migrated down the Nile Valley into Kemet or what's being called uh, Egypt uh, uh, today. Uh, and that's uh, a civilization that, that we have most of the artifacts from, more extensive than the earlier uh, uh, civilizations. So, and I think, you know, the, the things that are important in terms of discussing, let's say, uh, uh, spirituality, because I think spirituality is essential when we're talking about Africans, African history, African culture, African traditions, because we're a people who I think um, understand the primacy of spirit in terms of our, our native being, and that, that um, we're made of, of, of the spiritual and the physical, and, and the mental is, is in between, shall we say, transmitting the spiritual to the physical. Um, so it's important for us then to 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 look at um, um, our, our spiritual uh, uh, history, and, and certainly the, the pyramid texts, um, the, the coffin texts later on. But the pyramid texts initially um, were were in 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 the the the, the um, sarcophagi, etc., and, and in the burial places of the the um, shall we say the dignitaries of, of the Egyptian civilization from way back. Um, 3000 BC. Certainly, we know that they're the earliest um, spiritual and philosophical works in the entire world. Can you take us a little bit through that in terms of pyramid texts, how they were found, where they were found, et cetera, et cetera? The I pyramid text. Up with a discussion about spirituality and religion, and as you end up with that. <laughs> Certainly. Yeah, the pyramid texts, they date back to the period of the fifth ruling dynasty in ancient Egypt. And the very first pyramid texts appeared on the walls of Pharaoh Yunus. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh Yunus is one of the fifth dynasty rulers. Now, we divide ancient Egypt's history into the Old Kingdom, which is dynasties one to six, Middle Kingdom, which is dynasties 11 and 12, and then New Kingdom, which is dynasties 18, 19, 20. So dynasty five is very far back. And you've got all kinds of estimates for how long ago that was. Some people say that was 4,000 years ago. Some people say that was 6,000 years ago. And what the pyramid text charts is Pharaoh Yunus's passage into the underworld. You could call it the netherworld. And ultimately, he ascends to join Ra, um, and that became one of the original beliefs of what would happen to you in your afterlife. You would aim to join Ra. Ra is, of course, the sun or the spiritual power behind the sun. And as far as we know, the pyramid texts are the oldest body of religious writings in the world. And at the same time, there were writings by a very famous ancient Egyptian prime minister, and his name was Patahotep. And his book is called The Maxims of Patahotep. And there was a book that was published in the early 1900s where they called it the oldest books in the world. There was a guy called Myers who reproduced the, the uh, writings of Patahotep. 
Now, Patahotep's philosophy was about the importance of doing ma'at. And ma'at, she's a goddess that represents truth, that represents the law, that represents justice, that represents righteousness. And ma'at, she's sometimes shown with wings. And so with wings, this is where the Western world came up with the idea of angels. She's also representative of the scales and the scales of balance. And this represents justice. And the European concept of Libra, which is also the scales, uh, Libra has evolved into Lady Justice. So in many European countries, you'll see uh, justice represented as a blindfolded woman holding out a sword and then coming off the sword are the scales, the balance which represents this balance of between um, uh, right and wrong um, and as a way of symbolizing justice. And these ideas the ancient Egyptians had, certainly as early as the fifth dynasty, the fifth dynasty is where we can prove they had the ideas because they're on the walls. And then from there, the ideas evolve uh, through the um, coffin texts, where the same writings are now on coffins. And then by the time we get to the 13th dynasty, we start to see new texts coming out. And these new texts are adding to the frame of reference that eventually becomes known as the Book of the Dead. Some people call it Peret M. Heru. Peret M. Heru is coming forth during the day, coming forth by day. Um, and this is, this is how the ideas develop. Now, what the early African civilizations and the oldest two were Nubia and ancient Egypt, they realized that religion can be a very, very important tool of building civilization. And it does it at the state level, it does it at the individual level. And so with religion, spirituality is, if you like, a quarter of a religion, giving the inward expression of a religion. Rituals give the outward expression of a religion. Ethics is then the code of what is right and wrong. And futurism is where the religion will tell you what will happen in the future or what would happen in your future. And it, the ancient Egyptian and Nubian tradition has all of this in there, represented on one hand by the pyramid texts and on the other hand, by the maxims of Patahotep. Mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, that's, that's a very in, in, informative. Um, yeah, I think also that traditionally o o over time, the, the shall we say, the, the, the cosmogony and the cosmology of, of the universe and how Egypt itself developed and, and then how human beings um, are developed, meaning um, on the evolutionary scale, uh, as the highest uh, uh, evolutionary animal or manifest manifestation of the divine was also being taught at, at um, you know at one of these um, uh, four centers. Uh, certainly, we, we, we know that um, at Hermopolis what was one, Heliopolis what was another one. Uh, certainly, Memphis and then Thebes. And 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 if you if if you look at at, at Hermopolis where where taught or Tehuti. The wisdom deity was was supposed to be in charge, if you will, meaning um, and of course that simply means um, understanding uh, the basis of creation and creativity, and this is something that we have as a as a cosmology um, that the West doesn't have because the West begins with the Big Bang theory, and and, and all of a sudden you know there's this um, explosion, and 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 there's an explosion and, and matter is created in in nanoseconds or what have you. But nobody knows what happened before. Um, that does not in, exist in terms of um, Western scientific understanding. Everything starts then with the creation of matter, and and let's say that was what twelve billion years ago or, or something, uh, you know, of that nature. But you know, we go before that, <laughs> and, and and we say before that, we we had what's, what's described as Hermopolis, which, which which is those eight. Um, Figures, shall we say, uh, in the primeval new, which, which is kind of the, the, the watery substance out of which all creation uh, uh, came. 
and 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 we have no unknown head. And again, we we see how we have the opposites, um, the, the the unity of duality. We don't have one versus the other. Uh, we have no unknown head, uh, uh, which really means formlessness, and then form. We have hey and hey head, which means infinity and eternity. But then it can get space time. That's the that's the the, the opposite uh, uh, polarity. You have Kirk and Kirkhead, and which is darkness, but darkness gives rise to light. Again, you know, you have, you have the polarity of that. And then you have Amun and Amunet, which you have consciousness of self and consciousness of things. So, so this is the beginning, shall we say, of, of, of creation. And, and uh, out of that then came Amun, Ra, and Pata. And Ta is the intellectual principle, and so on and so forth. Um, and then if you want to kick in here, uh, you know, uh, because uh, we need also to go to Heliopolis as, as the next step. Yeah, the idea of the Hermopolitan uh, cosmology, as they call it, mm -hmm. uh, this is the idea that there were eight prim primordial ancestors represented as male-female pairs. Well, why male-females? Because males and females represent potential, and the potential is the potential to reproduce. And that reproduction, then, as you say, uh, Nun and Nornet, Ku and Horhat, Ku and Korket, Amen and Amenet. And what comes out of these are things, finiteness, light, and visibility. And these ideas had a big impact on later civilizations, as we shall see, because when the uh, Guyanese philosopher, Professor George G. M. James, wrote Stolen Legacy, he noticed, wait a minute, don't some of the ancient Greek ideas sound a little bit like this? Mm -hmm. And that was a big thing. And then when scholars looked at, well, what were the ancient Egyptians at the city of Heliopolis, the city of Ra? What were they teaching? And they also begin with the primeval waters of Nu, and then Patar comes out of it, and Patar coming out of it representing stability. Mm -hmm. And then we've got um, Atum Ra, representing the sun and then um uh, atom ra creates two elements shu air tefnut water so what have we got we've got um and then out of that comes geb earth newt some people say sky some people say fire so you've got earth air water fire sky and again when the ancient greeks come on the scene they're running with that mm -hmm. and then we have um the, very, the most important thing that comes out of that then is um, when people look at Greek philosophy, a lot of it is looking pretty similar in a lot of ways to what the ancient Egyptians had. And since many of the Greek philosophers spent a lot of time in ancient Egypt. Greetings. My name is Robin Walker. I'm also known as the Black History Man. I am perhaps best known for my 2006 book, When We Ruled. Based on this book, I'm launching a new online history course aimed at you, the adults. You could be a parent, you could be a teacher, a mechanic, cleaner, professionals, care workers, security guards, taxi drivers, kitchen workers, entrepreneurs, tech heads, lawyers, all of you. We want people from all over the world to be empowered by our content. We want you to gain mastery over your history and heritage. And you can do this by subscribing to our course. Click on the link to get this powerful, life-changing material. Then you've also got what's called the Memphite cosmology, where it starts with the deity Ptah mm -hmm. and his power and spirit running through all things, animating all things, where he is the divine uh, artificer, the divine potter. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the images of Patar, he is shown like this, holding his staff. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the European American award ceremony, the Oscars, mm -hmm. he's shown in the same way. So Oscar is based on Patar. Um, and then what came out of these ideas at a much later date, you had Thales claiming that water was the source of all things. You had the Greek philosopher Anaximander claiming that the origin of all things is the infinite or the unlimited. You had Anaximenes claiming that all things came from air. 
and Heraclitus teaching that fire is the underlying element in the universe. Mm -hmm. So in other words, all the ancient Greek philosophers did at the very beginning is just repeat what their ancient Egyptian teachers taught them. Mm -hmm. um, now, for me, there is another lesson that I think the black community needs to get with. Mm -hmm. um, and that is the importance of Toth or Tehuti. Mm -hmm. And that's this. Um, there's a branch of European scholarship that, called the Hermetica. Mm -hmm. And the Hermetica is the teachings of the god Hermes. Mm -hmm. And Hermes, as you know, is really a Greek version of the ancient Egyptian deity Tehuti. And the teachings of Hermes, they've evolved into what they call the seven hermetic principles. And the seven hermetic principles is the basis behind wealth and success philosophy. Um, I've done some research into comparing, for example, the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which is one of the preeminent success books. As a thank you for visiting our website, we are giving you a free copy of our exclusive 100 Black History Facts, which is in fact a taster of our course content. Make sure you leave your email address and we will send it right to you. We hope it inspires you to dig deeper into your history and heritage. And you can see the seven principles of Tehuti running through all of it. Um, even ancestralism is in that book, surprisingly enough. So one of the things then that people used ancient African ideas for, they used it practically as a success philosophy, as an achievement philosophy, as a you can do it philosophy. And you'll get people in areas of sports, industry, um, literature, creativity, using these principles as an aid to building success. And I think a lot of black scholars dismiss the seven hermetic principles, the seven principles of Tehuti, because they think, oh, well, it's been contaminated by European thought, but it's actually proved to be quite a useful body of information as well. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's also the 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 the, the, the basis of, of that whole um, uh, business of of creativity. There, there's that whole um, at the secret, what they call the secret, and 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 the secret is is simply um, really uh, uh, self knowledge, which which was the basis of, of of all these you know four institutions that we're talking about, you know back there in in in, in Egypt, you know three thousand BC or or what have you. And and it's it's a way to 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 get to to your source because as you go through the, the whole thing, like for example, in in terms of Heliopolis, I mean you have Atum Ra, which is the will of God, and then as you mentioned before, you have Shiwan Tefnut. I interpret them slightly differently. I, I interpret uh, uh, Shiwan as fire, uh, Nut as water, and and then and Tefnut as as the air or or movement or expansion, and Geb as contraction or or matter. You know, how we look at it, basically, those are the principles within space, which which was created by, by you know, um, Atum Ra. And then, of course, you, you go to the, 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 the evolutionary aspect of it, where, where, you, where you end up then um, also now as um, with many, many different things. That's where Patar comes in and you end up with Osar, Oset, uh, Seth, uh, uh, Nepsis and, and Heru. And that's how you end up with the nine, um, the, 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 these five, which, which are, so, so you end up with these, you know, um, nine, nine principles, which, which tell you all about evolution. And it also tells you that you're made in the image of God, because Atum Ra is what produced you, and he produced you as his highest uh, uh, product. And, and you are able, as, as Ausar, um, 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 to, to, to be one with Atum. Which is the, the the sort of one God, if you will, uh, that is hidden. And you know, uh, um, uh, 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 Amun means means hidden, and, and a tomb means means the will. So, see, these are all principles of divinity that that we also possess, and and that's the secret <laughs> that is embedded in in in, in um, uh, Kemetic uh, uh, cosmology and cosmogony. Which, as you're saying, I, I don't think we understand enough of it as, as African people, but it's being applied by Europeans in, in, in these ways of, of, of success, grow, grow, growing rich, and, and, and 
you know, the secret of life in terms of creativity. And, and that's what we have as, as, as African humans. Um, when we are in touch with our inner selves, we, we have this, this creativity that, that, that comes out and, and um, that mirrors the, the creativity of, of the universe. And, and that's told when you, when you go to Thebes in terms of the origin of time and the beginning of this whole cycle, one cycle that ended, I forget what the name of the, the, the serpent was Earth Tower or something like this. And then a new cycle you know, started when this new serpent was, was broken open, shall we say, which is in, inertia. And then time started again for this new cycle. Um, so, you know, we have this understanding of the universe, the creation of the universe, um, the source of, of the creativity of the universe, um, you know, how it came from, from, from consciousness and, and energy uh, 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 to matter and, and all the principles that are behind it, because in all of this, ma'at is the basic principle behind creation. And this is what human beings have to aspire to. And as you know, um, why don't you take us through uh, the business, um, um, the, the, shall we say, the death scene of, of the individual who goes into the hall, the hall of justice. Uh, yeah, he's going to get his heart weighed, you, you know, and, and my art is on one side, the, the, the feather in terms of the scales, and, and, and his heart has to balance this feather. So he has to be a disciple of Matt, or he will not, you know, go to the next phase. Uh, we, 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 which is a higher form of life. Um, I think we missed something out, which I'll, I'll put in, and then we'll get to that if you don't mind. Okay. This is what it is. The the the, the book of the dead mm -hmm. is a journey where you're tested and tested and tested at the behest of Osiris or Osa, and those tests are gruesome and you have to emerge triumphant and you have to stay righteous while you're being tested and then the final test is when you then arrive at the hall of the two truths and what happens is you enter the hall this is what the mythology says and then you address the 42 judges of mm -hmm. And you say the sin that you didn't do. Uh, so people call it the negative confessions. I have not done iniquity. I have not stolen. I have not um, uh, uh, told lies, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And eventually you get to Osiris. Now, the judgment is where you have, you've got Ma'at, who represents the female, and the male equivalent is Tehuti or Toth. And Toth is shown with a, a, a writing board with everything that you've ever done in your life written down. And what happens is uh, you're judged. Mm. And the idea is in the balance, your heart has to be as light as a feather. Now, what does it mean for your heart to be light? It means you have not got a sinful and heavy heart. And this idea of a sinful and heavy heart, it's almost like you, that, that your heart and the feeling represents, if it represents heaviness, it means you've live, lived a guilty life. And so your life has to be, your heart has to be light so that it can symbolically balance something as light as a feather. And then the feather is one of the feathers, you know, we said that my art is shown with wings, one of her uh, her feathers is then is then put in the other pan and the two have to balance mm -hmm. and that symbolizes you having to live a righteous and therefore a guilt-free life mm -hmm. and, and if you can go past that then that means you have emerged righteous and that symbolizes um if you like victory that symbolizes if you like success according to how the ancient Egyptians saw the world.